Welcome back to the Compact Echo course. In this part of the course, we will talk about the parasternal short axis view. In the parasternal short axis view, we are located in the second to third intercostal space besides the sternum on the left side of the thorax. And compared to the parasternal long axis view where the marker points towards the right shoulder, this time in the parasternal short axis views, the marker points towards the left shoulder. To get to the parasternal short axis view, you start in a parasternal long axis and rotate the transducer 90 degrees clockwise. So that the orientation, as I mentioned, changes from the parasternal long axis where the marker points towards the right shoulder to the parasternal short axis where the marker points towards the left shoulder. The patient is still in a strictly left lateral position to make scanning easier and you scan as close to the sternum as possible. Otherwise, it's very likely that the lungs will block our field of view and you might achieve other atypical views we will talk in this course about as well. As I've mentioned, it's mostly located in the second to third intercostal space. And one very good feature about this view is you can tilt the transducer from the aortic valve up until to the apex. So you can scan the entire cavity of the left ventricle. And how do you get this view? Well, here we start in a parasternal long axis view. This is the aortic valve, the mitral valve, left atrium, left ventricle, ascending aorta. And you keep the aortic valve in the center of the image and you rotate. And then when you always kept the aortic valve in the center, you achieve a parasternal short axis view of the aortic valve. Let's do that again. Keep the aortic valve in the center of the image and rotate and you will end up with the aortic valve in a short axis. What is the anatomy we have to differentiate? Well, in the first views of the parasternal short axis, we focus on the aortic valve. The aortic valve has three cusps, the right coronary cusp, the left coronary cusp, and the non-coronary cusp. The orientation of the cusps is easy to remember as the right coronary cusp always points towards the right ventricle of the patient, the left coronary cusp towards the left atrium, and the non-coronary cusp towards the interatrial septum seen over here. There are more structures you can differentiate, mentioned already the right ventricle, this is the right atrium, the left atrium, the interatrial septum in between, the tricuspid valve. We will talk about it shortly because the tricuspid valve is a very important structure in the parasternal short axis views and the pulmonic valve and here even parts of the pulmonic trunk. Let's have a look how this presents in a B mode image. Here you can see the aortic valve in the center. Same holds true here. Not all the time you have this perfect image quality, but here you can differentiate quite nicely the right coronary cusp, the left coronary cusp, and the non-coronary cusp. The left atrium, the right atrium, the right ventricle, the right ventricular outflow tract, and this is the pulmonic valve and this already the pulmonic trunk. Note that there is another structure we can differentiate, that's the left atrial appendage seen over here. So even in a parasternal short axis view, you can visualize the left atrial appendage. In this view, we have the same anatomical findings, the right coronary cusp, the left and the non-coronary cusp. Here we already have a better visualization of the tricuspid valve, the pulmonic valve, and even more is seen of the pulmonic trunk. When the image quality is not optimal, you still very often are able to differentiate if you have a tricuspid aortic valve, here seen as well like this Mercedes star. This is the right, the left and the A or non-coronary cusp. Here again, the left atrium, the right atrium, the RVOT and the left atrial appendage. The next view we are going to focus on is a focused view of the aortic valve. So we zoom in in the aortic valve, the same thing we do in the parasternal long axis view. If you didn't see the video, if you want to know how this is done, just click the box in the video. Well, for this view, we see that the tricuspid valve has three 
cusps as well, we do see that it is a bit sclerotic or calcified, but there is no severe stenosis present as you can see that the opening of the aortic valve is preserved. So always also focus on the aortic valve in the peristernal short axis view as well. The next view is a short axis view where we focus on the tricuspid valve. To achieve this view, move the transducer probably a little bit more lateral, so away from the sternum as well, and tilt in the transducer. Keep in mind that the lungs shouldn't block the field of view. And also keep in mind that this might be a bit of an oblique view. You can see here parts of the left ventricle, the mitral valve, this might be the left atrium, this is the right atrium, the interatrial septum. So we do not see always the aortic valve perfectly in this view, but we are focusing distinctly on the tricuspid valve seen over here. With the tricuspid valve, it's important that you can also differentiate the leaflets. In this case, we do see here definitely the septal leaflet, and this is the posterior or anterior leaflet, depending on how you angulate the transducer. Here we do have the right ventricle, the right atrium, the pulmonic valve in this view, we do not see. Just as a side note, down below here, we do see the descending aorta. Another structure you can see and you shouldn't mix up with a pathology is the IVC, the inferior vena cava. Here with color Doppler information, you see that the structure is entering the right atrium. This is the interatrial septum, the tricuspid valve with trivial tricuspid regurgitation, the RVOT, and this is the IVC in the center, again, the aortic valve. Here are two more examples with a very prominent IVC seen over here and here with color Doppler information again. As mentioned, all these views are important to display pathology, especially with the tricuspid valve. We can, of course, visualize tricuspid regurgitation or other pathologies of the valve. So in this case, you have a patient with amyloid heart disease. You can appreciate that the left ventricle is definitely thickened and the tricuspid valve also looks a bit thickened. Furthermore, we can see with color Doppler information that there is probably moderate tricuspid regurgitation present and in this view with this alignment of color Doppler you can also use continuous wave Doppler to estimate systolic pulmonary arterial pressures. So keep in mind the tricuspid valve has many views where you can visualize pathology such as tricuspid regurgitation. The next view we have to focus on is a distinct view of the pulmonic trunk and the pulmonic arteries. How is this done? Well, you can see it in this graphic over here that we always cut through several planes of the short axis view. For the pulmonic trunk and the pulmonic arteries, the marker of the transducer doesn't point towards the left shoulder, but more towards the head of the patient to really fit into the pulmonic trunk. Well, how is this done? In a scan, you can see here the anatomical findings in the B-mode image and the color Doppler findings in this view over here. So we can differentiate here the pulmonic valve, same as here, and this is the pulmonic trunk. And the pulmonic trunk divides into the right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery. Sometimes when you have a large central pulmonary embolism, it's even possible to see the thrombus in this area, depending on where it is located. Additional information is provided by color Doppler. We do see a normal blood flow into the right and left pulmonary artery. We do see that there is a trivial pulmonic regurgitation, which actually is a normal finding. Furthermore, in this view, you can measure the pulmonic trunk or even the pulmonic arteries to see if they are dilated and if there is indirect information that pulmonic pressures might be elevated. The next view we are going to talk about is the view of the mitral valve in the peristernal short axis. How is this achieved? Well, we know the view of the aortic valve and we tilt the transducer downwards to the level of the mitral valve. What we can see here is a round left ventricle and here would be the LVOT if we would tilt the transducer backwards to the aortic valve and when we have the mitral valve in the center of our image, we can see the anterior and the posterior mitral valve leaflet with a nice opening. How does this look like in a B-mode image? Well, here we have it. This is 
a nicely normal round left ventricle with a good radial and circumferential left ventricular function. We have here the anterior and here the posterior leaflet of the mitral valve. This would be the RVOT and parts of the right atrium. So in this view, you can evaluate not only the mitral valve, but also the contractility in a radial and circumferential way of the left ventricle. In this next loop, we have a worse image quality, but still we can differentiate the left ventricle, the right ventricle, and the mitral valve and the opening of the mitral valve. So why is this important? Why do you need the views of the mitral valve and especially this peristernal short axis view? Well, this and many more other topics will follow in the next video.